here it is. The culmination of what I estimate to be over 100 hours of designing, testing, planning, and iterating over the last several months, I present the final version of my remote item delivery blueprint. This final version improves upon the version you may have seen in another one of my videos in three major ways. First, this blueprint adds central storage utility. In fact, the blueprint is central storage, but with the remote item switch capability built in. Secondly, this blueprint adds drones. As you can see, this drone port on top can be used to both call from and load into our central storage. Finally, this blueprint uses a closed system of packaged water instead of smelting iron ore to activate the remote switch. If I've lost you at this point, don't worry. I'm going to show you what this blueprint is for, how the remote item delivery system works, how you can use it to save time in your own save, and how you can make your own or get access to this one. As you can see, this blueprint is not intended to work by itself because it is only designed to hold four items. A central storage that needs 30 or maybe even 40 items is going to need quite a few of these blueprints. So I put these together in a way that I might use them in my own save. And I'm going to build one of these storage buildings and hook it up from start to finish so you can see all the steps. As you can tell, I've got a spot picked out for it and we're nice and lined up. Keep in mind, 500 packaged water is part of the required materials needed to build each blueprint. Now the first thing that has to be done before anything else is we have to hook up the power. And the reason that we have to do this is because as soon as we hook up the power, our packager on top of our blueprint is going to immediately begin unpackaging the packaged water in its inventory. These newly created empty canisters will then start to move down through the system until it reaches each of the four packagers down here that are currently unpowered. The reason that this must be done first is that these empty canisters will block our storage materials from being sent up into the drone port above. I'll explain exactly how that blocking system works in much more detail in a few minutes. The next item on our list is to hook up our inputs and our outputs. Now the only input we need to worry about on our first blueprint in the row is our battery input. This other input is not needed on this particular building, but will be on all the rest in this row. Now let's go take a look at our outputs. And here we have two outputs lined up with the two inputs from the next blueprint in the line. Here's the batteries. And here's the belt that carries storage items that have overflowed once storage is full off to an item sink. The last input is for our four storage items. Now I'm not going to connect this just yet because we have one more job we have to complete before we can allow our storage items to flow into the system. For each of our four items, the first being concrete, we'll need to set the sign and then set the smart splitter above. When setting the splitter, we're going to replace the output that is currently set to any to the item we wish to store. The first being, of course, concrete. Our next item will be iron plates. We set the sign, and then we set the smart splitter. The next two items, iron rods and wire, are then completed as well. One last thing to complete before we connect our storage items is setting these signs on our outside storage to match the inside. Once those are set, we're finally ready to hook up our items. Here are each of our four items. Concrete, iron plates, iron rods, and wire. And those are all now being fed into the line where we set our smart splitters. From this position inside, we can access the lower storage bin and see we have concrete flowing. You'll of course notice I do have a second bin included for each item, and that is for a few reasons. One is to provide additional max storage, 
but the other is to create a separation between items that will stay in our central storage and items that can be called for remotely. So only items stored in the second bin and new items entering the system can be sent to the drone port. This ensures that we'll always have some items available at the central storage for emergencies. Our next step is to name these four priority power switches, which are the key to allowing us to affect this storage system from any distance. We'll name them each drone port one, plus the item they turn on. That sets everything we need on the inside of our blueprint. Now for the top. The first thing we'll need to do is build a drone. The vehicle can't be included in the blueprint itself. Next, I want to review the features of the blueprint up here. Obviously, I've built a network of catwalks and glass foundations. But we also have these two belts lit behind glass. As you can see, the items that are entering our central storage are shown on this belt. This gives us a visual indication of what's being input into the storage without having to go inside. Now this belt will show any items that have overflowed from their two bins and need to be sunk. Again, this gives us important information at a glance as to which items we have overflowing from our central storage. So once our concrete fills up both bins and whatever is not being sent to the drone port, it will flow down the recycle line down through however many storage blueprints you've built, and finally sunk. In addition to the drone port, I've included a light. If you've watched my content before, you'll know I love playing with light and lumen since update 8 has gone live, and I couldn't resist putting in a floodlight for our drone landing zone. So, let's take a look at our light control panel. Now, I've included a light control panel in the blueprint, However, each row of storage buildings needs only one control panel to control each of that row's lights. So, this panel can do the job of the entire row. So let's go ahead and hook this building's lights up to this one. And to do that, we delete the light control panel and connect our light node. Labeled here, over to this light node. and you'll do that for as many lights in the row as you have. We have several labeled nodes here, our power source, and of course our lights, which go through our light control panel. But we also have our drone port power, and that gets routed through this priority power switch. This power switch must also be named, and we're gonna name it drone port one. The reason we have this priority power switch is so that we can control at a distance not only which items we wish to receive, but also whether or not the drone port is powered on. And that's gonna save not only batteries, but a ton of power. 100 megawatts of power for each drone port we have turned off. The next thing we need to do is to configure the drone port. The first step is to name the drone port, and we're gonna name the port drone port one. Concrete, iron plate, iron rod, and wire. Next, we need to set the routing instructions for our drone port. We haven't talked about our destination much yet, but I've got two drone ports ready. Receiving one is where this port will send to, and then back to itself. Similarly, this port is named and set to receiving two. Okay, time to get this thing in action. And to do that, we're gonna head off to our destination across my giant Star Wars inspired mega factory. This factory is designed to be the Imperial Senate on Coruscant with the top sliced off. So I have room to work and to place 220 drone ports in my main playthrough. But today we're using it for demonstration and this represents our destination. Maybe it's a brand new factory that you're building on the other side of the map and you need to send yourself some items to fill your on-site storage. And here we have our receiving one and receiving two ports. And everything is set up and ready. So here we go. How do we use this? How do we turn it on? How do we send ourselves items from across the map? We do that with our priority power switch. 
So we go in here to circuit break priority and we're gonna set up our system. We're gonna move all the switches we just named over here to group seven so we can see them and access them a lot easier. So we have our drone port and each item switch, both for our first and then our second storage building. So let's turn it on. The first thing we're gonna turn on is concrete. And then how about some iron rods? Then we're gonna turn on the drone port so the port can begin filling. And on this side, how about some plastic and quartz crystal? And then again, the drone port itself. Okay, here it comes. Now this is actually the second trip of these drones. The first trip, the drone port didn't have any time to load any of the items. But on its return trip, there was plenty of time for loading. If you haven't seen drones in Satisfactory, they are pretty amazing. Very versatile, but you better have plenty of power and plenty of batteries ready to go. Soon, we should see our concrete and iron rods. There they are, the concrete, and then the iron rods. Now, let's check the storage sorter. And here's the concrete, and then the iron rods. Perfect. Works like a charm. As promised, I'm gonna show you how using the switch to power on a packager allows the items to flow. Really, how this blocking system works. Here I have an enlarged version of the mechanics I'm using for each of the four items in each blueprint. Now we have the two packagers here, one for packaging water and one for unpackaging it. In the blueprint, one packager for each item and then one unpackager for the entire blueprint is enough to handle all four of the items for a total of five packagers used. What we're gonna do first is provide 100 packaged water to our unpackager. What this is gonna do is create empty canisters, just like it does in our blueprint when we connect in the power. Our empty canisters are gonna to flow toward our packager that is gonna produce packaged water. But the power is turned off. And because the power is turned off, empty canisters that can't flow into the packager begin to back up along the belt. Now this smart splitter is set up so that only empty canisters head to the left. Any other item that is undefined, meaning no empty canisters, gets to flow forward into our drone port. So what items are those gonna be? Let's say we wanted to move some steel pipes. The steel pipe is blocked and cannot enter the drone port because of course the belt is being clogged by empty canisters. Now, using a remote switch, we can actually turn on this priority power switch to provide power to the packager. And once there's power provided to the packager, it will then clear the empty canisters and allow our steel pipe to flow into our drone port. Now I've got this set up with Mark III conveyor belts here so that we can see the items move. But in the actual blueprint, I've used Mark V belts. Now that they're Mark V, the difference between the 60 per minute canisters coming through doesn't provide too much interruption for the Mark V belt. There are some gaps that are taken up by the canisters flowing through the belt, but you're gonna be very close to the full 780 per minute flow. And when we're done, when we've received enough steel pipes at our remote location, we can just turn off the power switch. Stop power flow into the packager, which of course causes the empty canisters to overflow and once again clog the belt and not allow steel pipes to flow into the drone port. This is it. This is the key to the remote sending system broken down for you step by step. Now there are a couple other, maybe more simple and less complex, alternatives to turn on belts using power. And one of those ways is actually a truck station. Now the reason I don't use truck stations myself is because these truck stations, if you include the floor space required for its total footprint, are significantly larger than the one packager and a couple of splitters. But that doesn't mean it's not a good solution and depending on your needs, this may be the best solution for you. So the truck station, just like the drone port earlier, doesn't take in any items unless it's powered. So, just like we did before, 
We can turn on and off the power through the priority power switch, therefore remotely turning on or off the flow of items the exact same way as the other method. Finally, an idea that's been thrown around in my Discord is the option of just using the drone port itself to block the flow of items. Of course, this will require one drone port for each of your items, and that does add up fast. My design saves a lot of space by only having one drone port for four items, but a simpler solution would be a single drone port for each item and then no need for the packagers or unpackagers. You could simply turn on power to the port, which will allow the items to flow into it. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, each of my blueprints are available as early access to my members for 30 days. After that time, I'll make each blueprint available in the free area of my Discord. If you made it this far into the video, I've got one last announcement to make. And that is, I've launched a Patreon in addition to my YouTube membership. I realize not everyone wants to support through YouTube, and I understand why. So this gives additional options for anyone looking to help out and of course gain access to all the perks I provide to my members. Not just early access to the blueprint files I've designed. The link to my Patreon is in the description of my videos. Recently, I've begun streaming to Twitch at the same time I stream on YouTube. And if you're a Twitch viewer, you can support me and access all the same perks by subbing to me on Twitch. That's a total of three methods, YouTube memberships, Patreon, and Twitch subs. Thank you so much for watching. This video has been a long time coming. I'm looking forward to using this blueprint in my next playthrough after I finish my current Star Wars themed one. I hope you take what I've shown you and build one for yourself and maybe take my designs and ideas even further. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any ideas you'd like to see me work on in future designs. That's it for now.